The story is true. John was able to see its shining perfection in every direction. Down some golden street, there's a place just for me. Sights I will see there, the saints of all ages, they will kneel at his feet around the throne. But in my new home, when I look out the window, I'll see the face of my King. Just one look will do to prove it's a room, a room with a view. There's only one reason why I'll have a home there. I'll go. Saints of all ages, they will kneel at his feet around the throne. But in my new home, when I look out the window, I'll see the face of my King. Just one look.
Can you only imagine? Can you imagine just standing before the king? Oh, I can only imagine what it would be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine. Here's before me I can only imagine
football and all sports, I could say. So it was a pleasure for me as a basketballer myself, alongside with Eli, Beckles, Benson Prosper, the best shooter of all time, to play alongside this great man. Keke was like a father to us all. He mentored a lot of young boys growing up into playing basketball. We love him. We will surely miss him. And it's just, just not much for me to say except good things from this man. Shall I continue? Continue. Good afternoon. Just want to give a quick story. I remember. Um, I remember when um, my oldest son is now an adult. He's 21. But I remember when he was a little boy and he fell ill in the middle of the night, and I had to find some way to get him to the hospital. And you know, at that time, I was thinking. You know, who can I call? I called the taxi stand, the phone just rang out. And, you know, a little voice just said, call Skeki, call Ricky. And I called him, it was, I think, like 2 a.m. And he was there, like, in about 15 minutes, literally, to take my son to the hospital. And, and, that, that little experience has always stayed with me. That was the measure of, of Ricky, of Skeki. He was somebody who was absolutely selfless. Every opportunity that he had to give something to somebody, especially those that he valued, that he shared a friendship with, he would take it. And all through his illness, it was, it was difficult for me because... I'm used to seeing Skeki as this big strapping man who you couldn't push off of a spot on the basketball court. And you know, he was struggling to do basic things like breathing, you know, and moving about. That was difficult. And even now as I stand here, it's been from since the 22nd of December, it's still something that's difficult to come to terms with because, you know, like Ringo said, Skeki was like a father. I call him the godfather. It wasn't just basketball. It wasn't just football. We played football on the basketball court too, you know, because he loved all sports. It wasn't just that. He was a friend. He was a brother. He was a father. He is one of my mentors. And, um, you know, today we just want to make sure that we give him a good sending off. So, Skeki, rest easy, my brother. Let me breathe first. <laughs> One of the most difficult tasks that I have ever been asked to do. Um, unfortunately, I wish I had my shades, but if I did, then I won't be able to read. <laughs> so... I'm hoping that I can stay strong to deliver this eulogy. Um, so, 
When I received this call from Lisa to do this eulogy for, for Ricky, I was like, Lord, how do I do this without breaking down? What do I see? What can I even can I, can I even do this? How do I accept that a good friend of yours, a brother, no longer with you, even if he has gone to a better place? Well, well, I guess now I have no choice. But, but to continue to share his legacy with you here today and with, with this, you people that he had a positive impact on including myself and so many other here in St. Lucia in so many different capacities. Skeki and I was, Skeki and I always knew each other over from playing football at Kiwan Wallace, but we became closer friends when I was appointed the lead to his team. And that relationship grew within a very short space of time to more than just close friends, but family. Keki was very knowledgeable in his field, and he was a a natural born leader and he inspired and guided me also to become an interactive leader that I am today. One thing I must say with me was to be part of a team, not just manage it. Be involved and that is exactly what I did and believe me when I told you it paid off. I remember when we used to go to do, to, do, to do those changeovers that would last for hours, many times into the wee morning, but just being there talking shit, laughing, eating, some of the things we did best. Not only motivated the team, but it, was also, it also helped me to become part of a team and could not have done this without Skeki. In St. Lucia, you call, Skeki was my baka. I guess you guys know what a baka is. And of course, like I said, we became families, so our relationship went beyond the office. We spent hours after work in the sports club, talking, laughing, enjoying each other's company, sweating on the court, playing basketball. And amazingly, it was during this time I learned from him how to be a good father based on his interaction with Kado. The way he inspired and took care of him and coached him. And yes, that is the type of relationship I want to have with my kids. He helped me to become a better leader, more importantly, a better person. At one point, we used to eat together every Sunday and let me tell you a little secret. His cousin Lisa made the best lasagna ever. But I just want everyone here today to know that Skeki was one of the most loving persons that I have ever met. He may have been big and he may have been tough when he needed to be, but he was sensitive, loving, and caring to all those around him and I know that each and every one of you here today can attest to that. To end, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Ricky Esquick, for molding me into the man that I am today. Thank you very much. Thank Thomas, Elijah William, and Robert Imanus sharing your interactions with Ricky. Ricky. At this time, I'd like to call on Vincent Prosper to deliver the eulogy.
Good day to everybody. It's with deep sadness that I have to do this eulogy. It's not an honor, as you would say, in the case of a best man in a wedding. But as hard as it is, I find it very difficult to pass up the opportunity. On behalf of the family of Ricky Estwick and myself, I would like to say thank you to everybody who made it here to celebrate in the life of this wonderful guy before we, he's taken to his final resting place. I knew Ricky as a kid, a young guy growing up. He was a little older than me. I would sneak to the gardens whenever I got the opportunity. But I had this overprotective big brother. And Ricky was one of my lookouts many times. He would be the one looking out for me to tell me, hey, he's coming. Ricky was a very humble young man growing up. Very thin, big afro, bubbly guy. He earned the nickname Skekro because of his physical frame at the time, which later transcended into Skeki, as most of us would know him. Ricky, after his uh, primary school education at the Anglican School, he attended the Castro's Comprehensive School. He was one of the very first set of students to attend that school when it just opened. After leaving school, Ricky found a job as a lab technician at the Ministry of Health, where he conducted um, tests on various um, body fluids, etc. He was very excited about that. He used to tell me all the time. But then he got his big break with flu, cable and wireless. And I think that became his passion. From all the friends who worked close to him said that he was a hard worker. Ricky worked with flu for, well, started with cable and wireless. Um, there's a few name changes, and I think by the time he left, it was probably Lime. He worked with the company for about 16 years and worked his way up to a class one jointer. The company would later down, downsize and contract the services. Ricky had an issue. He would tell me over and over he had an issue because he felt some of the people who were in charge were the very same ones who, who had built these companies to contract the workers. And Ricky held up. He didn't want to. He didn't want to work for these companies. He felt it was sabotage. His dream was to have his own company. So he decided to hold out along with a few of his friends. However, these friends, I don't know, maybe through pressure or persuasion, they decided to go along. Ricky still held his ground and said that he was not doing it. He eventually sourced a piece of equipment 
a key piece of equipment, and he was determined. But one of the issues that held him back was his health. You see, it was during his time at Cable and Wireless, he started developing some severe migraines. And after some time, the company um, had him seen by specialists and some tests was conducted and it turned out that he had a very small tumor. But Ricky procrastinated. He was scared. And it turned out the company, he, had, he was left with no insurance and unable to find the right care in St. Lucia. And also, it was very difficult for him to get assistance, though we tried as hard as we could to get the matter treated. Ricky would call me late, wee hours of the morning, when his pain was so unbearable, and I would leave my home to go down and help him, either take him to the hospital some occasions, or do whatever it was possible to, to try and ease his pain. Growing up around the gardens, or George the Fifth Park, I'm referring to Conway, Darling, Georgeville, La Pansy. It was a joy to have one of the most prestigious sporting facilities just outside your door. Like many of us growing up around the gardens, we became multi-talented in a variety of sports that was played at the gardens. During the 70s, the garden was the, the tennis courts in the garden was the place um, where tennis, Windward Island tennis was hosted. Ricky had the opportunity to meet and interact with many tennis players, including some of our top players such as uh, Johnny Easter, Evona Lewis. Ricky took up the sport, like most of us did, but Ricky was ex exceptional. However, due to the cost of equipment and the notion that tennis was a sport for the more affluent of society, he never footed. Ricky would also play soccer and was a very decent soccer player. He represented VSADC in the under-16 football tournament. But it was basketball that became his main passion. Ricky was a mentor to many, many young men. He was unselfish. It was never too much for him to teach. Ricky helped to build a dynasty, I would say, a local dynasty for VSADC. As we dominated basketball throughout the 80s and 90s, he went on to be the captain of the national team, representing St. Lucia in OECS and Women Islands basketball tournaments.
Ricky gave so much more than he got to the sport. He was honored by the St. Lucia Basketball Association, the Ministry of Sports, and also his old club, VSADC, for his contribution to the game. Ricky would find himself confronted with another medical issue. And the way it started was very strange. So after this migraine was finally, he finally, um, during a, a stay at Tapia Hospital, one of many, he was treated by a Cuban doctor who finally gave him some medication and that seemed to work. It was also uh, said to have the capability to shrink the tumor and it worked. So for three years, Ricky was pain free from those migraines. Then one day, I went to visit Ricky and Ricky is telling me, Beckles, you know I left home to go to Kenti. He lives in New Village. I left home to go to Kenti on the chaussee. And I had to stop many times to catch my breath. So I said to him, Oh, you, you're really out of shape. You need to start exercising. But little did I know that that was a symptom of a very serious problem. So as time went by, I decided to develop these breathing issues. He would have pain in his stomach, and he would visit his doctor, whose name I'm not going to call, and he would be given all kinds of medication. But the problem, the pain would just continue and it was getting worse and worse after seeing Ricky suffer with those migraines and I must say in my life I've never seen anybody a human, another human being in so much pain it was difficult to bear and helpless and now we have another issue So, on a few occasions, he was taken to Tapia and VH until one time, while at Tapia, he was properly diagnosed and it was discovered that he had a heart issue. So, I decided, knowing the person that I am, I like to no thing. So I went online and I googled the the, uh, the medical issue and I must say it was not looking very good. But I decided not to tell him and I gave him hope. Because one thing I can always say Ricky was a very spiritual person. He believed in God. And even at times when he wanted to give up, I would say, listen, remember, you had those migraines and we never thought they would go away. You never know what could happen. I'm one who believes that there's nothing you can do for somebody, for a soul, after it's gone that person did not put his house in order. He did not know God. You could burn a thousand candles. You could see any amount of Hail Mary and our fathers. 
But I truly believe that unless you take care of your soul while you're living, there's nothing anybody can do for you. A funeral is just a ritual. It's a celebration of life. But I'm so happy. I am so happy to know that Ricky had the spiritual sense required to go see the Father in heaven. Ricky suffered a lot. But he held on. He fought like a lion. He fought and he fought and he fought until he couldn't do anymore. It was painful to watch. At times he'd say to me, I'd rather go. I cannot take it. All I could do is just encourage him. Tell him to hold on. Miracles can happen. So, today I want to give a little joke. One of the last jokes that Ricky and I sat down and laughed about something that happened a very long time ago. Maybe just a few people would know. But I think it's the right place and time to say this joke. So during the mid-80s, early to mid-80s, when they were evacu evacuating um, the CDC and the Conway Barnardale areas to make way for the government buildings and the, and the apartment, the new CDC apartment buildings. There was one business called Crick's Funeral Parlor, which was also located on Darling Road. So, after Crick left, for some unknown reason, they decided to leave a few coffins behind. So we hatched a plan to play pranks on people. During that time, Ricky had access to the tennis house in the gardens. So we would store those coffins there. And at nights after playing, we would come out to play again. Now, back in those days, the gardens, the darling area was not as lit as it is today. So we had two crews, basically, two crews. We'd have one crew working the darling area, and we'd have another crew up just after the bridge coming into the gardens that would take you to the, to the, to the basketball court. And we would place those coffins either on the sidewalk or on the road, and we would just hide and watch people. And then someone would send a little stone inside the coffin, it'd ring, ping, ping, ping. As, as people got near. And I'll tell you, I don't think there was a, a what they call this guns, this timing guns, that, would, that was um, equipped to time these people. I truly believe there were people that, would, that were faster than Usain Bolt. Next day would come, shoes, slippers, whatever they were wearing. Cars would come down the darling, and then when they see this coffin, brakes, reverse, screeching all the way back up to Mark Bain Drive, and, and we would just have our kicks. Then we'd, when we were tired, we'd put it in, and the next night again. It became so popular, it wasn't joke ball and all. Even Jukboa. Then one night, we saw, while we had our coffin in the road, we saw a light coming. 
And to our surprise, it was a police van. And they just took our coffin and left. And we were upset. Up to day, we're still upset. So, if anybody here was a victim of our prank, you lost any shoes, I would like to apologize on behalf of Ricky. It was just a joke. Thank you. And we thank Ricky, sorry, Vincent for giving us this snapshot into Ricky's life. And it's really sad to know that he suffered so much. But at the end of it, we thank God for giving him the time to endure that pain and to draw closer to him. So we praise God. At this time, I'd like to invite family members who would like to follow the procession. You can proceed to the middle half of the church. Our celebrant this afternoon is Father Cleophas Joseph, better known as Father Cleo. Shall we all stand? Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, who raised Jesus from the dead, be with you always. And with your spirit. Praise be God, the Father of mercies, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our afflictions, and thus enables us to comfort those who are in trouble with the same consolation we have received from Him. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I bless the body of our brother Ricky Desmond with the holy water that recalls his baptism, of which St. Paul writes, all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. By baptism into his death, we were buried together with him, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him by likeness to his death, so shall we be united with him by likeness to his resurrection.
on the day of his baptism, Ricky put on Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, may he be clothed with glory. At this time, let's all join in singing the hymn, Just a Closer Walk. Brothers and sisters, we have come together to renew our trust in Christ, who by dying on the cross has freed us from eternal death, and by rising has opened for us the gates of heaven. Let us pray for our brother that he may share in Christ's victory. Let us pray for ourselves that the Lord may grant us the gift of his loving consolation. Let us pray. O God, in whom sinners find mercy and the saints find joy, we pray to you for our brother Ricky Desmond, whose body we honor with Christian burial, that he may be delivered from the bonds of death, admit him to, to the joyful company of your saints, and raise him on the last day to rejoice in your presence forever. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. I invite you to please sit. Shall our two readers please come forward to the sanctuary, Trinai Chico and Stephanie St. Rose. The first reading is taken from the Book of Wisdom, chapter 3, verses 1 to 9. He accepted them as a holocaust. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of the are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the, universe, of the unwise, they did not appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. 
They're leaving us like annihilation, but they are in peace. If they experienced punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was the affliction, great will the blessings be. God has put them to the test and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. When the time comes from his visitation, they will shine out. As sparks run through the stubble, so will they. They shall judge nations, rule over peoples, and the Lord will be their king forever. They who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love, for grace and mercy are with those he has chosen. The word of the Lord. And in response to this reading, we sing the hymn, Yes, I Shall Arise. Second reading is taken from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. We shall stay with the Lord forever. We want you to be quite certain, brothers, about those who have died to make sure that you do not grieve about them, like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell of this from the Lord's own teaching, that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming 
will not have any advantage over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call out the command and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died in Christ will be the first to rise. And then those of us who are still alive will be taken up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall stay with the Lord forever. With such thoughts are these you should comfort one another. This is the word of the Lord. Shall we all stand for the proclamation of the gospel? Says the Lord, take for your refuge, take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, escorted by all the angels, then he will take his seat on his throne of glory. All the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate men one from another, as the shepherd separates sheep from goats. He will place the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then King will say to those on his right hand, Come you whom my Father has blessed. Take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you made me welcome. Naked, and you clothed me. Sick, and you visited me. In prison, and you came to see me. Then the virtuous will say to him in reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? or thirsty, and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger, and make you welcome, naked, and clothe you, sick, or in prison, and go to see you? And the king will answer, I tell you solemnly, insofar as you did this to one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it to me. Next, he will say to those on his left hand, go away from me with your curse upon you, to the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. I was hungry, and you never gave me food. I was thirsty, and you never gave me anything to drink. I was a stranger, you never made me welcome. Naked, and you never clothed me. Sick, and in prison, and you never visited me. Then it will be their turn to ask, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, a stranger, or naked, sick, or in prison, and did not come to your help? Then he will answer, I tell you solemnly, Insofar as you neglected to do this to one of the least of these, you neglected to do it to me. And they will go away to eternal punishment and the virtuous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Be sit. To the family of our brother Ricky, we wish you condolences from the cathedral. Parish, we pray that God may be with you to support you in your moment of, of grieving. And when a loved one dies, we may be in different places of grief, depending on how close you were and, and so on. So it may be in a place of sadness, anger, depression. Wherever you are, that is where you are. And I pray that God may give you the grace to go through this time and at the end of your process of grieving, become better and stronger for it. 
I was talking to someone recently and she was telling me about a brother of hers. On her birthday, her brother called her in the morning and she had a happy birthday with her and she says, I'll be with you later in the day. And later in the morning, she got a call that he had just dropped down and died. And in sharing this story, it reminded me of this reality that, that life, like death, life is assured to no one. Today is guaranteed to none of us that any one of us at any time will be called to leave this world. We cannot determine when or how any of the, the circumstances of our lives. That applies whether we are rich or poor, whether we are strong or weak, handsome, or whatever we may describe ourselves as. None of us truly is in control of our lives. We, we really aren't. We can think we are. We can do things to prolong our lives. We can treat ourselves well to make our lives better. But at the end of the day, when death comes, none of us can actually stop the day of death. I share this because many times as families, you know, we, we fail to, to live, live well with one another. So today I place two questions before you. If you got a call from a doctor saying that your loved one had only one more day to live, what would you do differently with that loved one? Whether it be a son or daughter, a parent or a spouse or a partner, how would you live with that person if they had only one more day to live? What would you say? How would you treat them? What would you do? Would you make time for them? Because sometimes you can be very busy doing many things and you have no time for one another. If you were to get a call that your loved one had only one more day to live, would you still be as busy as you are now, if you are busy, that, that is? If you found out you had only one more day to live, would you have the same conversations? Because sometimes you can be very insultive and very quarrelsome and ignore each other. If you knew your loved one had only one more day to live, would you treat him or her the way you are doing now? Now, hopefully the answer is yes, because... Every one of us ought to live in such a way when our loved ones die, we have nothing to be ashamed of. And we can't wait until we get a call because we already know this, that tomorrow is guaranteed to no one. Every one of us knows it in our heads. We just live as if it's not true. The truth is, it is very possible that today is the last day you have with your loved ones. If that were the case, what would you do differently? Whatever the answer is, begin to do that. Because that's the truth. Sometimes when a loved one dies of accident or sudden death or any of a number of things, we say, you know what, I, I wish I had more time. I wish I had done this. I wish I had done that. My dear brothers and sisters, time is allotted to no one. You have no idea how much more time you have. Use every day to the best of your ability. Don't do anything to one another that you'll be ashamed of if your loved ones pass away. Next question is this. If you found out from your doctor you had only one more day to live, what would you do differently? Maybe some of us would begin to pray more or would change, not stop drinking or stop smoking or any of a number of things. I've met a number of people, um, guys who are drinking and smoking and one guy came to me and says, you know, Father, I have COPD, and now he stopped drinking. And I say, you know, it's a, little, it's a little too late to stop drinking and stop smoking now that you're already sick, critically sick. And that's maybe a re reality for us to, to remember, because sometimes we treat ourselves badly, we don't take care of our health very well, and when we fall sick, all of a sudden we, we start trying to do better. No. If you knew you had only one more day left to live, begin to do today the thing you would do on that day. Because guess what? Life is guaranteed to none of us. In some cases, there are things that we know we ought to have done years ago. We keep putting off doing. Maybe apologizing to a loved one or saying I love you to someone, to a friend. We begin to take, make, make plans between ourselves and, and God, making things right between ourselves and, and God. The truth is, every single day you wake up is a gift and there is no guarantee you're going to get another one. So every single day live as if it were your last day. In Psalm 90 verse 12 it says, Teach us to number our days right that we may gain 
wisdom of heart. I don't want you to plan for next five years, next ten years. It's okay to have plans. But understand there is no guarantee you will see next five years or next ten years. Live every day as if it were your last. Because one of these days, it will be. My prayer for our brother Ricky is that before he died, he would have made time to do the things that were necessary for his life between him and God, him and his family, him and his loved ones. My prayer for you, before you leave this world, before I leave this world, that we would make the time to do what is right between us and God, us and one another, us and our loved ones. Amen? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Maketh me to lie down in green pastures, leadeth me beside the still waters, he restoreth my soul, leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shall we all stand for the bidding prayers? And I advise everyone, persons who have bidding prayers, to please come forward to the sanctuary. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, His Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask Him to save all His people, living and dead. Father Church, through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, may our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Cardinals, Bishops, and Priests of the Church, and all who spread the good news, be given the strength to express in action the word they proclaim. And may they be open to the signs of the times to exercise a ministry of humble service to God's people. May the Holy Spirit sustain them in their challenge to the values of our world in preaching the gospel of life and the hope of the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation. God of hope, we thank you for our nation, St. Lucia. We ask of you, of your mercy, O Lord, that we live in peace and unity as brothers and sisters and as one body in Christ. Lord, we thank you for your beautiful island, St. Lucia, and we ask for your daily blessings upon us. We have this in your holy name. We pray for the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the departed souls, O oh God, you promise eternal life to all who follow your way. Grant to the souls of your departed servants, release them from all their sins, and raise all up who have died. We pray especially for the soul of Ricky Desmond Estwick in gratitude for his life. Now that he has come to the end of his earthly journey, may Christ give him and all the departed a place at the banquet of the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the poor, the sick, the suffering, the hungry, and the oppressed prisoners, the unemployed, and those in any need. Gracious, gracious, gracious God, the comfort of all who sorrow, the strength of all who suffer, hear the cry of those in misery and in need, their affliction to show them your mercy, grant your solace, 
and hope to those who in their desperation are not aware of your presence. Give us, we pray, the strength to serve them for the sake of Jesus Christ who suffered for us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father, you, Father, you, God of all wisdom and understanding and the giver of all spiritual gifts, we pray that you touch the lives of the youth of our nation. Let them see your face, know your heart, and experience your love in their life. Strengthen them with the precious gift of faith in you alone. May they find examples that will encourage them to live the faith with courage and devotion. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We present all our prayers and petitions to our Blessed Mother for help in these trying times as we say, Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, grace the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, women and blessed, blessed is, is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for, for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. In the prayers we offer for our departed brother, Ricky Desmond, cleanse him of his sins and grant him the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Be sit. There is a, co a collection, and we ask that you please give generously. And at this time, let's all join in singing the hymn, How Great Thou Art. <laughs>
like to invite Alison Price, Carol Price, Brody Simon, and Ricardo Estwick to please come forward to the table on my left. And at this time, we have a special rendition. And we all say, Amen. Kindly stand for the final commendation. Now let us pray as Christ the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Ricky. And now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting. But we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see him again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another with the faith of Jesus Christ. Let's all join in singing the hymn, Close to You. Present him to God the Most High. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest gone unto him, O Lord. Let your light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Ricky, your servant. In the sight of this world, he is now dead. 
in your sight may he live forever. Forgive whatever sins he committed through human weakness, and in your goodness, grant him everlasting peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Ricky, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you find eternal rest. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. And let your life shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed to the, the mercy of God, of God rest in peace. In peace. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. And I'd like to say a big thank you to you for your, your support and your presence here this afternoon. And let me remind you to please collect all your belongings, especially your water bottles. Please collect them. And we recess with the hymn, I'm Walking on My Way. <laughs>
the story is true John was able to see it's shining perfection in every direction down some golden street there's a place just for me I will see there the saints of all ages they will kneel at his feet around the throne but in my new home when I look out the window I'll see the face of Just one look will do to prove it's a room, a room with a view. There's only one reason why I'll have a home there. I'll go. Start for my sin, and though I'm not worthy, and so undeserving, because of God's grace, He me in. I'll have a room with a Sights I will see there The saints of all ages They will kneel at His feet Around the throne But in my new home When I look out the window I'll see the face of
If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you If you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light, give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold And when you get there, there's a hand to hold When your day's down here or through There's a place up there for people like you If you walk around with your heart on your sleeve And if you're trying to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for a love so someone could be saved a place for people like you. I've heard up there the streets are made of gold. And when you get there, there's a hand to hold. I believe when your day's down here or through, there's a place up there. For people like you If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you If you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light, give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold And when you get there, there's a hand to 
to hold I believe when your days down here are through There's a place up there for people like you If you walk around with your heart on your sleeve And if you're trying to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for a love so someone could be saved There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold And when you get there, there's a hand to hold Days down here or through There's a place up there For people like you May we who mourn be related one day with our brother. Together may we meet Christ Jesus when he was all like a pairs in glory. We read the scripture. Come, you, my father, has blessed, says the Lord. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Let us pray. God of endless ages, through disobedience to your law, he fell from grace and death entered the world. But through the obedience and resurrection of your son, to us a new life. Blessed Abraham, our father in faith, a burial place in the promised land. From the Joseph of Arimathea, to offer his own tomb for the burial of the Lord. In a spirit of repentance, we earnestly ask you, look upon this grave and bless it. So while we commit to the earth the body of your servant, Ricky, he's only be taken into paradise through Christ our Lord. Our brother Ricky from this world to himself, we can make his body to its resting place, for we are just, and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory, for he is risen, the first one from the dead. Let us commend our brother to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace him in peace and raise up his body on the last day. Welcome for the King of God's kingdom, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our holy bread, bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us on to temptation, but deliver us from evil. God of holiness and power, I take our price of your your servant Ricky. Do not count his deeds against him, for in his heart we desire to do your will. As his faith is granted into a people of earth, so may your mercy turn into the angels in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And so is your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Merciful Lord, through the anguish of the sorrowful, you are attentive to the prayers of the humble. May your people who cry out to you in their need and let them go in everlasting goodness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest but unto him, O Lord. And let the perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, for the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Amen. 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 Amen.
Upon the law of the righteous. List the righteous to put the hands and do anything. But do good unto those that be good. But as for such a thing of life unto the crooked way, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. But peace shall be upon his Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Yes. Hold him, Michael. Your path finish already. I could recite the whole stick here. Yeah. <laughs> 
You know, this one, this world is not my home. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing treasure that I love somewhere on the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's world. And I don't want to be in this world anymore. Heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels let him be from heaven. Bana, Bana,
la famiglia, giù la famiglia. Gracias.